Hey, Tawaya, it looks like we've got uh, low attendance today. If you want, you and me can sit here and talk about whatever, but uh, I think that we didn't have an agenda and uh, it's five minutes in. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> It's up it's, to you. I I don't yeah. I don't have anything myself that I brought. I just thought I'd come and see what I, I what got, came up. I got a couple of things. So the okay. first thing yeah, the first thing is let me I'm going to post it in the chat. Okay. So this okay, is a, I see a huge, yeah, huge request for the Kubech. So I'm not sure <laughs> this working group is the, working on the Kubech, but uh, we do. So the, the concept is to, the, the basically, we want to connect like edge server or edge devices to the cloud infrastructure. So, okay. so we do currently use the Kubech, but the oh. pay the but the the Kubech did not allow us to use container network interfaces. So we did enable it. That's the it still uh, requires a specific procedure, but uh, we do now use the Cilium CNI with Kubech. Okay. To connect to cloud. So that's the the one thing I'm, I'm not sure this is like edge working group it uh cube edge has yeah. its has its own group it's yeah i think the meetings are a little odd because i believe you know it's china hosted um yeah. let's see how i'm trying to look at this right now on your date um yeah, it's funny i haven't used github for a while but how long has this poll request been in? It just, uh, I think, like a week. Okay. So we are just waiting for the feedback. Oh, of course, I do sync with the Kubech maintainers of, on uh -huh. this project. They, they, they are good to go. So, okay. The, yeah. And then the what you thing... did, you enabled Cilium, but is it generic so it will enable other CNIs as well? No, uh, we do have to do the specific procedure because the Kubech. Kubech uh, starts the, the server, like which is called a meta server uh, to connect the cloud and the edge communication. So that, that's kind of like a proxy that we, ha so we have to bridge the API to the Kubernetes API server by mm -hmm. this proxy. So that's the one of the hack that we did. So, uh, so for now, I think that with Kubernetes, we can just enable Cilium only. Uh -huh. And what's the reason, um, are, is there a reason you chose Cilium in particular for yeah. what you're trying to do? There are, there are several. So the Cilium is, the, as, as far as where we can see, uh, Cilium is currently the most advanced one of the CNI implementation. So, uh, and they also provide uh, Tetragon for the security and observability. Uh, and also the Cilium comes with the WireGuard VPN. So the, the basic idea is that we enable Cilium with WireGuard VPN in the Linux kernel, uh, which is like a lightweight, like a VPN solution because the, the whole, whole, whole feature provided by Linux kernel. And then we can connect the data, data plane. Uh, I mean, like a pods communication between cloud and edge using WireGuard. Okay. Okay, I'm just making notes of this. Oh, yeah, so <laughs> that makes a lot of sense for an edge location then when your your transport isn't secure. Um, yes. So, I mean, like from the application perspective, we do use like many framework, the one of the robots and the one of the edge devices, cameras, the proprietary framework. So it's the network connectivity should not be uh, dependent on the application framework. So that's why we came to Cilium and the WireGuard solution because they provide like a VPN connectivity and so that we can connect between cloud and edge. So that's the 
one of the reasons. I'm just curious, are you at all tempted or looking into uh, also using any kind of mesh or um, you're, you're just okay with the psyllium CNI? Oh, you know, that we have looked into like some possible solutions because the Kubesh itself provides, it's still like a PLC phase, but they provide edge mesh. Okay, got it. By C it's sort of like a similar thing. I think they do use a label P, P, P2P library or something to construct uh -huh. like a full mesh network. That's fine. But so far, they don't use eBPF. That means there would be significant overhead for the network packet routing in the user, user space or something. So, uh -huh. but the Cilium does eBPF. So that's, the, that's really good, you know, like uh, improvement for the user perspective, because we don't want to waste any time for the system time. So, and yeah, so we actually, to be honest, like we were going with WeaveNet as a first place, uh -huh. but Fitch has been EOL, <laughs> so end of life. So yeah, I, I wasn't like in the company behind that started Weave yeah. closed down. Yeah. I think they did provide professional support, uh -huh. um, but they, they actually shut down all of a sudden, hey, we don't use any, we, we don't do any open source all of a sudden, so. Yeah, and then you wonder what kind of uh, uh, yeah. life that, that is going to have. <laughs> well, it's my, my observation, I'm not an expert, but there are so many of these meshes came out that like many things in tech, there's probably only room for the top two or three to survive, really, to get the traction I guess, yeah, to I be guess. sustainable. And uh, it, uh, the rest of them, maybe it takes a while for them to fade away, but eventually it happens. And you see, yeah. you saw the same thing even in orchestrators themselves back in the early days when you had things that even had fair numbers of users like uh, Apache Mesos versus Kubernetes. But Ultimately, I think uh, a a, wi a winner materializes, and if you're stuck on one of the ones that are behind, even if they survive, they just don't get the feature sets and the maintenance that yeah. you'd like to see. That's true. Yeah. Okay, I put that in the notes, um, and I took a look at it. It looks it looks interesting. Um, yeah, the, I was uh, I was going I I got a, the question. If yeah. I may. So the question is okay. That currently, you know, like uh, we we have like a cube edge and a Cilium WireGuard, whatever it is, we we can connect like a cloud instances and some edge server. Uh, oh, that that's fine. Mm -hmm. But the something I'm trying to look for is like, uh, like do we have anything? to reach out to this kind of like a cluster or orchestrating or deployment management tool to microcontrollers. For example, like a NatX or something. For example, like a, I have like a Wasm container and then I want to deploy this the small OCI image to NatX microcontroller. Okay. so. So what you're saying, these you've got edge nodes that aren't even, they're not even capable of being a Kubernetes cluster. Is that what you're getting at? That's or, or not correct. even yes, not even a a cluster node, if you will. Let, much yeah, less let's a say, whole let's cluster say, by themselves. Yeah, let's say we cannot allocate any resource for the Kubernetes, or that's not even the Linux platform. Right. Okay. So if it isn't Linux, I don't believe so. In addition to being not a Kubernetes node, you're not even going to run a Docker container then, right? Because no. I mean, uh, to to run a Docker container, it's either got to be Linux or some would say Windows. Although the mis mis mixing Windows and Linux containers, I I don't know. I personally wouldn't go there, and 
Windows as an edge node in terms of resource is probably even less attractive than uh, Linux unless they've changed something recently. So, but you're looking at WebAssembly inside an OCI container just so that your packaging and your uh, distribution of packages can, can still yeah. stay in an OCI registry. So I, I do believe that there is support in WebAssembly, but integrating that into a Kubernetes node, that I haven't seen. It would be an interesting concept. Um, no, I mean, like it doesn't have to be like a Kubernetes, but let's say like a lightweight container deal or something, because the, I think that's the first place we need that some container runtime to start the Wasm container or something. But it, it we cannot use container because it requires Linux. The, right. For example, like we have like a NatX platform, but we 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 want to have the same kind of like experience with Kubernetes. Yeah, there are yeah. things like that, but it's unfortunate that the 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 two people who could talk about it are Kate and Liam, and they're not here. And I oh, think yeah. they're not here because I believe there's a WebAssembly uh, conference going on in in Seattle this month. It might be going on right now, um, but it was oh, okay. I should scheduled be there. <laughs> to be about now. And WebAssembly has camp, so you have to be careful. Yeah, it's become very common, I believe. And, and I wish they were here to correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm sort of talking out of memory rather than that I personally work with this day to day. But I believe that packaging WebAssembly in OCI has become very commonplace but there are multiple places where people are running it. So some of them are running it server side on very yeah. capable hardware like Linux nodes, but there are people running it on um, nodes that are much smaller than what you'd have for hosting um, Docker containers, you know, getting down to footprints well below a gigabyte of RAM. Uh, and it definitely can be done. It's been over a year since I did it myself but I was able to get some of these WebAssembly things running a year and a half ago on little microcontrollers that that I had. And it definitely can be done in terms of an orchestrator or putting some kind of a remote uh, management API on it. That I haven't seen, but that doesn't mean it isn't out there. And I think I've heard, let me see. Let me just do a quick um, web search, but I, yeah, Kate sure. is working on this project called Spin with Fermion. Yeah, Fermion and, is. I think that Kate is. I I I do know that Kate is working on Spin, and uh, but I think they their focus is kind of like shifting to cloud side. I guess. Yeah, yeah. I was just trying to look up to see what the the lower the floor is for how low you can go on resource in that. Because I know people have talked about that in the context of running at edge, but I don't know if running on those real low, low resource yeah. things is aspirational as opposed to their, they've actually delivered it. And there are some other projects, however, that also uh, have, have gone over after that uh, web assembly um, on the edge uh, concept. Let me see if I can find the name of that WebAssembly conference. I think it. It's not WasmCon. You know, there, I'll put this in chat. There, so there was a. WasmCon is their conference and they should have had one maybe last year, but you might want to go search WasmCon and go look at the past agenda to see what you could find there in terms of, uh, you know, edge talks. The, the one I just posted in chat is the link for the upcoming one for this year, but there should have been one for yeah. last year. And if any of that was going on, I would think you could find that in the uh, conference agenda. 
And then more than likely the talks are up on YouTube by now. Yeah, actually, I already did, and we're talking about like <laughs> leave devices. Uh -huh. So yeah, that's why I'm trying to explore the people uh, experience this kind of thing because the use case that we have is like uh, we don't have like enough resources to run Linux. For example, like security cameras. Mm -hmm. So the small microcontroller is just next to like hardware sensor, in this case, camera. And then we have like hundreds of devices in the building. And then we want to redeploy some application, uh, just one click and this kind of thing. That's, so, that's the really straightforward case, but yeah. So kind of the minimum viable features you'd be looking for is distributing and keeping packages updated, meaning your WebAssembly code, you know, get them out yes. to the location perform yeah. updates, and then also have the, if you want to call it an orchestrator, have it manage networking. And that would yes. kind of be your minimum viable feature set that if you got those that's two true. things, you'd be good. So yes, that's true. Yeah. You know, in terms of, I, I'm just brainstorming here how you do it. And one interesting concept that I've seen, it is in Docker containers, but it was rather interesting, I thought, is Portainer came up with sort of a pseudo Kubernetes by putting the, a Kubernetes a, subset API on top of just bare Docker so that you could use the Kubernetes API. And it didn't, it didn't, um, it didn't implement the full Kubernetes API, just a subset of it. But they deemed that, hey, a lot of these things out at an edge location, particularly if you've only got one node, you know, if you look at the Kubernetes API, there's some of these things that just make mo no sense if you're not in a multi-node cluster. So yeah, they went correct. and implemented the Kubernetes API as this facade on top of uh, Docker, declared which of the API things are there and which are not. And it would seem like if you were to approach this WebAssembly like that, that would be an interesting concept where you could maybe, you know, to do one from scratch, you've got to come up with some kind of a management API anyway. And rather than invent one just out of the blue, cold, if you were to mimic one that already exists with widespread support, you got a couple advantages. Maybe some of the tool sets would just yes. happen to work with it if you got lucky, you know, as long as they only called the uh, API calls that were at, you, you actually had put on the thing. And number two, you you've addressed a lot of training overhead where your your software devs don't have to learn something completely new and different if it by design mimicked kubernetes itself um you know you're just stepping in the footprints that are already there so that people already are familiar with it maybe you could even pick up on some test cases but in terms of whether anybody's done it before i don't know of any but that might be an interesting approach to take, um, you know, if you were forced to do your own. Yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, the before implementing, of course, uh, if we have to, if that's the business requirement, we do that. But uh, mm -hmm. before that, we are trying to find. We belong to R and D, so we are trying to explore and find. Is there anything familiar with our requirements? So that's the the step I'm yeah. taking here. Yeah. It it seems like there is no way that you can be the only the only ones looking for this because yeah, it seems that's, pretty yeah. commonplace, right? Yeah. I, so, I do totally agree with you. So yeah, there there might must be something. <laughs> yeah, well okay. that I that I think is sometimes how these open source initiatives get incubated is that you know somebody has got to start at some point. And yeah all I can say is <laughs> Sadly, I'm not the expert in the WebAssembly space. And I I think um, Kate and Liam could probably tell you if they were on the call, but they're not. Um, yeah, that's fine. I mean, like, uh, like WebAssembly is one of the, one of the thing, because the, but, I mean, like uh, our requirements is as long as that OCI container we don't care. So 
we, we would use WebAssembly, but uh, we would use just OCI container image. So it doesn't have to be like WebAssembly, but what exactly we are trying to find is more like deployment tool to reach out to the leaf devices mm -hmm. in the edge. Yeah. I, I know that there, there um, is activity in that Harbor OCI registry to support edge locations in different ways. And it, it, as of about a year ago, it, I don't think it was actually in, it was a work in progress. And there was somebody I met who I believe was based in France who was working on it. Um, I had a conversation with, with this person at KubeCon Europe. Um, but, you know, even in terms of the registry itself, it's interesting because I think some of the features they wanted were to support uh, WebAssembly nodes that could operate in a disconnected fashion so that if you found yourself air-gapped from the internet, uh, you could still manage to operate. And I don't know if that is a constraint you'd also have, but um, um, that would be another aspect, another moving part of this that wouldn't really even be part of an orchestrator. Okay, well, I, I don't yeah, think I have yeah. anything meaningful to add. Yeah, I mean, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, that was a good talk. Yeah. And that's all I have. Okay. Okay, well, maybe we'll just call this uh, to a close then, because I, I don't have anything yeah. to put in myself. Okay, nice chatting with you and... Uh, Maybe Thank you. if you want to resume <laughs> this at the next meeting, uh, yeah. perhaps even put your question in the uh, Slack channel for Kate okay. and Liam, yeah. and then um, yeah, that makes sense. maybe if they respond, we could continue on a conversation about the topic for the next meeting in a couple of weeks. Yeah, sounds great. Okay, bye. Thank you very much for your time. Bye. Sure.